VPress 1.0 has finally came out. I am super excited. It's been a long time coming. I actually did a video on this three years ago, and it's awesome that it's finally in this 1.0 status. So Evan Yu just announced this recently. And if you don't know what VPress is, it's basically a static site generator, but it's a lot more than that. It's really used for documentation, but you can also create blog posts, portfolios, marketing sites, any of the view powered sites out there for documentation is using VPress behind the scenes. So if you like that look and feel, you'll feel really home because VPress has that as the default theme. So one use case I've been thinking about with using VPress for is I have a really old ghost blog and I haven't updated in forever. It looks really old and outdated and I am seriously considering using VPress moving everything over, maybe even using Ghost as like a headless CMS. If you are watching this video, you probably love Vue. So having like Vue enhanced markdowns even better. And I'll show you in a moment, we'll kind of fire this up and take a look at it to see how it works. Having the Vue enhanced markdown is really great because then you can embed Vue code directly in the markdown. And of course with Vue, with Vite, it's super fast. The navigation's great and it has some interactivity without penalty. So it's able to hydrate the dynamic view parts. And you can even do uh, server-side rendering and static site generation. Typically, I would probably recommend just using this with the SSG part. So it's statically generated. You could have it during the build, like grab data and then display it. And I'll show you a little bit about how that works. There's also a couple of parts which I didn't love. So I will show you in this video about some things I wish was a little bit better and a little bit easier to use. So let's take a look at some of the code on how to create a Vite site if you've never done it before. So we're gonna use the Git starting guide, as you can imagine, that's where we probably should start with, with Git starting to add and create a new VPress app. Now, I don't really love the Git starting guide. Maybe I just didn't read it very well, but it kind of has, it, it starts off with, if you wanna add this to an existing project, use npm add. Otherwise, just go ahead and use npx vpress init. Now, there's actually a, a small caveat here. So if I do npx vpress init, it's gonna ask me a few questions and this is fine but I'll show you where I ran into a slight problem. All right, so where should this config be? I'll just put it in the root folder. I'll call it my Vite test Vite press app. And then it gives you some themes. Uh, I'll talk about theming in a second. But I'll just leave the, leave the default one. And of course we want TypeScript and we want a package.json. So it'll go ahead and create all the files from here. And now to actually start this, if we look at the guide, it says, you need to run the npm run docs dev. So if I copy and paste that and run it, I get this error right away. That vpress is not found. So if I looked at this, I look at the package JSON it created, you can see here, it actually doesn't install anything to get it working. And so this obviously wouldn't work. You could do two different things from here. I uh, And you can either run npx of vpress or you can install vpress as a dependency. So it kind of feels like counterintuitive that they say, well, you can install this in an existing project by running this command. It feels like it shouldn't come with it. I don't know. You let me know in the comments if you think it should come with it. I think it should. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And now if I run this command again, it works. And now it'll open up in localhost 5173. And if we open that up in my folder, here it is. So this is the default, actually it looks pretty good, the default app. If we look at the directory structure, all it is is it has a bunch of markdown files in one folder and you can just start updating and changing them. And if you click around here, you can kind of see how it looks. And the way press works, if you're familiar with Nuxt.js, you probably will notice this. It's very similar with this router base, this file based routing. And you can see we're here, we have this MD. So if I create, let's say a new file here, let's create a new folder first. I'm gonna create one called guides. And then inside my guides, I'm gonna create a new markdown file. It's called index.md. I can just put in hello world. And then if I come back here and go to slash guides, it's gonna go ahead and give me an error and go to index. Here it is. So here's the hello world on my index and the guides. Very straightforward. You, see, so you can see the markdown works as expected. I, I really like this part about it. The file-based routing makes it really straightforward. That's a, a big plus for me. Another thing it has is it has something called front matter. So you can put these, these dashes at the top and then start adding things like title, 
this is my title. And if you save it and you go back, open up your app, you can see it changed the title of the page. So this is my title. If you look at the documentation, you can see there's a whole bunch of things you can do with your front matter. I'm not going to get it all into this video, but you can add in all sorts of things. There's a whole config reference guide for type template, description, head. If you need to add something to the heading, you can do layouts. It all makes a, a lot of sense. Another thing I want to talk about is with routing. Let's say I wanted to add in a link to a different part of VPress. I can simply add here. I could say this is a link to main. And then from here, I can just put in the path and you can actually, it's a relative path. So you can put in like dot dot and put exactly where you want. So if I put, add this in here and we come back to my app, if I click here, it goes back to the main page that works as expected. You can also do fun things like add in emojis. So let's say I add in these emojis here. I'll come back to the app and I'll go back to my slash guide index. You see how I hear I have the emojis. They work as expected. Also a part of this theme out of the box is it's responsive. So depending on your layout, it'll hide the sidebar or show it, which is really nice. It also has some really nice alerts. So let's say I want to add a note here and you see here adds this nice big note. If I look at the documentation, there's a whole bunch of them. There's notes, important tips. So they've added a lot of nice markdown extensions that you probably use if you're creating a documentation site or blog. Probably the most helpful that I really like is the syntax highlighting. It uses Shiki. So if I come back up here and I just add in, this is JavaScript. If I come back here, here it is. So it has the syntax highlighting that you expect. I believe it supports TypeScript and a whole bunch of programming languages. That's really helpful as well. So that's all the markdown stuff you can do. There's a few more things that I won't go over. Now, what's really interesting is that you can now embed or with VPress, you can embed view directly inside your markdown file. So you can do it a couple of different ways. So let's imagine here, I wanted to add in a button. So we can just add in script setup, lang equals TS directly inside here. I can close my script tag. Now, one thing you'll notice as I'm typing, you don't get the nice IntelliSense or the auto completion or the nice view stuff that you would get if you're actually in a dot view file. Since you're in a dot markdown file, it doesn't really recognize things correctly. It doesn't automatically format. There's a way to kind of get around this that I'll talk about in a second. Let's imagine though, let's continue on with our button example. So I'm going to create a, let's call it count and we'll import first to really get this working. You have to import view. So as you saw before, nothing was in our amp, my package JSON. So I'll import in a view and now I should be able to import in ref. And now I can do ref zero here and it should be available in our app. Now, anywhere in your markdown, you can put in any sort of HTML tags that, that you know and love. So you don't always have to use markdown. So in this case, let's add in a button and we'll call it press me and we'll close it. And then we'll add in a click handler. So click, we'll do counter plus plus. Okay. So I added some styling to my button here. It doesn't look that great, but it says press me. I could probably also, I don't know, add in a breaking point here. So it's on the other, the next line. And then we'll probably want to display it. So I'll just put double, double curly brackets. So just like view, you just use the double curly brackets and we'll show the counter. So if I did this right, we should see it. Here it is. And you can see here, I press it. It works as you expect it. It's ting one at a time. Now, this is probably not the way I would do this, obviously, in a production app. It's kind of sloppy. What I kind of would do is I would just go in here and create a new file. I don't know. We'll call it button.view. And then in here, I could run skip script setup, lang equals TS, and then set up and do the same thing I did before. Now, one nice thing, too, of doing it this way is I've my index MD. You saw I, I added in all these styles here. It's kind of sloppy. I'd rather just be able to add it in here so I can add in the style tag here. You know, it's scoped directly to this component. So let me do that. And then once I have this component the way I want it, I should be able to just import it in. So I'll just do a little cleanup and then I can just add it in. And you can see I actually changed every single button to this orange color. So maybe I'll do a little update here. I'll do style scoped. Let's see if this works. There we are. And now here's my button as is my counter zero. I'll just do a click handler here. And I'll do counter plus plus. Yep. And now it's working as expected. And then I can obviously 
have all the all that logic in one component instead of all over the place. And all I did was just import it in here and then I can just have it anywhere in my markdown that I want. The last thing I wanna show you, let's imagine we were creating like dynamic routes and we wanted to have this act more like a CMS. One way you can do that, let's create a new file here. I don't know, let's call it postmd and we'll have inside here, hello from post. And then you can also have in the params here for post. So let's assume like this is gonna be auto-generated for you. Now, obviously this won't work because this bracket signifies that this is dynamic, that it could change, but we haven't defined what it is. I'll create this new file. I'll call it postpaths.ts. And this file will actually define any dynamic data and actually the name of the routes that we want. In this case, if you look at the documentation, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And it's kind of, it's in this format. You just do an export default and you put a paths as one of the keys and then you return exactly what you want. In this case, this is the params. We have something called package and foo. So if I do this and I'll call this instead of package, I'll call it post. Now I should have post foo and bar as one of them. So if I come back here and I go to guides here, I should be able to put in a name here. So in this case, instead of index, I'll put in foo. And a lot of times you have to stop and restart it after you add in that pass because it that only gets run initially when the app is compiled or build. So now if I come back here, if I put in, you see I already put, if I put in bar, now I have hello post from bar. If I put in foo, I have hello post from foo, foo. If I put something random, that's not an either, it'll go to the 404 page. So that's a really neat way I can dynamically create this. And this actually doesn't have to be, this pass could be async too. So this gives you the opportunity to connect to a backend, grab a bunch of data, and then dynamically create your whole, uh, all the different dynamic routes for this. And so that's what I really, really like about it. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but it is possible. The last thing I kinda wanna show you is if you go into your VPress app and go into VPress here, you have this config.mts, and this is where you can kind of change the navigation sidebar that goes with this theme, which we'll talk about in a moment. You can also create a separate file. If you look at the documentation, let's say you wanted to have your own CSS inside there, you can uh, do that. You can create a theme folder in this .vpress folder and then an index.js or ts file. And this is where you can import in your themes and then import in your own custom CSS if you like. So you don't have to use their CSS. One thing I don't love about this is if there is a whole section in here about extending the default theme and creating your own themes and just everything I've seen about this, it looks pretty not straightforward. I would assume that this would be easy, but it really isn't. Even in the starter app that it comes with, you can see there's a lot of um, this, this special hero front matter, there's special features. These only work inside the default theme. There's also a, a lot of different examples here, but I'm just with this, the way this layout is and the way you create themes, it seems it has a little bit of a learning curve. And if you compare this to Nuxt, I could definitely see creating a Nuxt app and using something like Nuxt content, which has similar features and you can statically output it has a, a bigger ecosystem, probably more people are using it. If you need help, might be a little bit better, especially if you want a completely custom look and feel to your app. I'd almost want to go with Nux3 with Nux3 content than going with VPress. Though I haven't deep dived into the theming system to tell you exactly what the differences are, but everything I read in here, it sounds like it's not, It's it would take a little bit of a learning curve to figure out how to set this up, how to use all these custom used data hooks and put this together well. If you're especially if you're already used to Nux, it might be easier to use Nux to use if you're creating like your own blog. I'm gonna try to make that determination soon because I want to update my own blog. So we'll see if I use VPress or not. All right, thank you so much for guys watching. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment below of what you want to see next. And if you guys like V, thanks.